Hey, what is up, mortals? It is TC Crew here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 5 of What If Quirks Were Outlawed. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, uh, we begin. Kushima had just wandered around, trying his luck with the areas that he was going to. He hadn't found his friends yet, and he was growing worried because of it. He thought that he would find them at the places he initially thought of looking at, but he didn't know what to do when he came out empty-handed. There was one other place he could think of, but both him and his friends knew that nothing good came their way from that place. The black-haired teen was discouraged at that point, knowing that he wouldn't be able to do this on his own. He needed help, and he could only think of asking the vigilante group for it. That was when he heard a pained scream come from an abandoned building, and his curiosity got the better of him. That led him to his current situation, standing in front of the same two vigilantes that he knew after punching away what looked to be an AQTF agent. The black-haired teen looked at the two vigilantes in silence, until Bakugo spoke up. What the hell are you doing here, you petty criminal? The blonde said, sounding quite aggressive. Kushima got annoyed upon hearing this, as he responded by saying, Is that how you talk to the guy who just saved your sorry ass? With a similar amount of anger, Bakugo looked at his saver annoyingly as he answered, Never ask you for your help. Just as aggressively as before, Kushima's annoyance seemed to rise hand in hand with Bakugo's as he then said, Yet so desperately need it. Bakugo got more angry upon hearing Kushima's comment, and the two proceeded to argue with no regard towards anything else. Midoriya slowly got up and watched the two with confusion written all over his face until he noticed that Night Eye was getting up on the other side of the room. The green-haired boy panicked as he shouted to the other two teens, Can you two save it for later? We have a bigger problem to deal with right now! Both Bakugo and Kurishima stopped after hearing Midoriya shout, which Bakugo knew was not something he usually did. The two then turned their attention towards Night Eye and quickly readied themselves. So what's the deal with this guy? Kurishima then asked, hoping to find out what he had gotten himself into. That is when Bakugo answered by saying, It's called Sir Nidai, that's all that we know. With a voice that was still angry, Kurishima did not like this answer, for it didn't give him much to work with, but that is when Midoriya filled in some details. Be careful, he's fast and appears to have incredible reflexes, the green-haired boy said, a little nervously as he held up a small knife. This answer helped Kurishima a lot more, because now he at least had an idea of what they were dealing with. It didn't make it ideal, but it was better than nothing. The green-haired teen watched as the individual called Night Eye slowly got up to his feet once more, before carefully analyzing the trio that was in front of him. He then looked directly at Kurishima, quite curiously, before speaking. You seem to be well acquainted with these two. Perhaps you'll give me the answer that they refuse to give me. Can you perhaps tell me about their involvement with Endeavor's recent defeat? The man said, sounding cold and intimidating. Kurishima finally knew why his two companions were being targeted. It was for saving him. It made him feel a little guilty to be the cause of their problems right now, but he was a little too angry to let it affect him. The way Nidai spoke had pissed him off, for it sounded like he was defeating Endeavor. Yeah, I'll tell you about their damned involvement. These two saved my life when Endeavor was hellbent on beating me to death. Kurmish shouted angrily, his emotions being on the behalf of both himself and his saviors. Nidai was completely unaffected by this, for he had gotten an answer. The black-haired teen had just told him that the two others were there that night, and that they were involved somehow. To him it was enough to say that they had fought Endeavor, which meant that they should be treated like real threats. Nidai then pushed his glasses back into place, before speaking. Now there are two brats with attitude. How terrific. The agent said, just as coldly as before. Both Kurishima and Bakugo got angry upon hearing this, as Nidai then said, That attitude only strengthens my opinion about Endeavor's actions. With that attitude, I'm sure that he had a good reason for deciding to kill you. With a voice that, for the first time, showed any hint of aggression and malice. Kurishima just lost it after hearing those words, as he blindly charged in to fight Nidai. He hardened his skin and began throwing wild punches towards the man, but none of them landed. Nidai just kept avoiding every single attack like he could see it coming, until he countered. He pulled a weird object that looked like a paperweight out of his pocket before using it to punch Kurishima in the face. The black-haired teen staggered backwards in pain, before charging in once more. Nidai looked unaffected as he knocked the teen back once again. The agent was about to follow with another attack on the teen, but it was immediately stopped when Midoriya tried to attack him from behind. 
He dodged and knocked Midori back before doing the same to the blonde that charged immediately after. Kushima was stunned after seeing this, for he didn't know how it was possible. How was Nidai capable of avoiding attacks that he clearly didn't see? The black haired teen tried to answer this question, but stopped himself when seeing that Nidai was about to charge at Midoriya. Kushima didn't hesitate as he dashed towards Nidai and managed to knock him away from Midoriya. Kushima was even more confused now. How did he manage to hit Nidai just now? How does he do what he does? He pondered these questions deeply until Bakugo walked up to his side and said, This isn't working! We can't hit this bastard! This was his usual level of aggression. Kurishima could feel the blonde rising frustration, and he agreed with him. But he didn't have a solution to their problem, so he turned his attention towards Midoriya. The green haired boy looked nervous as always, but he was thinking. It looked like he was carefully going over everything that Naida had done up until now, and was actively looking for a way to turn the tide in their favor. That is when Midoriya's expression landed on the floodlight, and he got an idea. It's like he can see all our moves before we do them, and that's terrifying. His vision is his greatest strength, but if we stop playing by his rules, it can't become his weakness," the green haired boy then said, as he slowly stood himself up next to the two other teens. Both Bakugo and Kurishima looked at Midoriya in confusion, until the green haired boy pointed towards the floodlight that was behind Nidai. The two other teens finally understood what Midoriya was trying to say, and they liked that plan. They readied themselves before charging in once more. Kurishima started by throwing a punch, which Nidai smoothly avoided. Then Bakugo ready one of his explosions. What first looked like an explosion and meant to attack quickly turned into nothing but a blinding flash of light. Nidai had no choice but to instinctively cover his eyes, but it was at that moment that he realized that his attention had been focused on the wrong person, because just a few meters away from Kirishima was Midoriya, looking ready to throw his knife. At first it looked like he was going to throw it at Nidai, but that didn't happen. The green haired boy threw his knife which flew past Naida and crashed straight into the floodlight. The light broke and the entire room was filled with darkness. Naida managed to recover his eyes a few seconds after the floodlight had been destroyed, and he could no longer see the vigilantes. He knew that they were still in the room, hiding in a dark corner or behind one of the many pillars he just didn't know where. The room was almost completely dark, only faintly lit up by the little light that seeped through the few windows. Midoriya, Bakugo, and Kurishima had been quick to run for cover after the light broke. The trio was hiding behind one of the pillars, breathing as silently as possible to make sure that Nidai wouldn't find them. They had two options now. They could test their luck with fighting Nidai like this, but that assumed that Nidai was just as blind as they were. Or they could try and run away, but deep down they all knew that Nidai wouldn't let that happen without a fight. This ultimately left them with only one option, take out Nidai and then run away. You blinded me, then you took out the only light source in the room so that I wouldn't be able to see you anymore. Perhaps I ought to give you more credit than I initially did, but it won't be enough to defeat me. Nidai then said, speaking loudly so that vigilantes would hear him regardless of where they were. The trio were surprised to hear Nidai speak, and they continued to listen as he said. My quirk lets me see into the future, let me see every single decision and action that you are about to make. I'm sure you know what that means. With the same voice as before, Midoriya, Bakugo, and Kurishima were all horrified upon hearing this. The fact that Nidai could see into the future was something they never would have imagined to be possible. Could they even win against something like that? Why would he tell us that? Kurishima whispered, his voice trembling from the utter terror that he was feeling. Bakugo breathed heavily as he realized why Nidai had decided to tell them this information. Because he's already seen the outcome of this battle. He knows he'll win, the blonde said, his voice almost being a perfect copy of Kirishima's. Midoriya was just as terrified as the other two, as his head went over Nidai's words multiple times. He got more and more scared every time that he went over it, but that is when he realized something. Nidai's words didn't align with his past actions, which meant that something else was going on. No, that's not why he told us that. It's because he doesn't know the outcome. He's just trying to scare us. Midoriya then whispered, speaking his mind to the other teens. Bakugo and Kurishima looked at Midoriya confused as he explained. He claims that he is able to see all our future moves, yet Kurishima was able to hit him. Not only that, but why didn't he stop us from destroying the floodlights if he knew that it was going to happen? Midoriya whispered, calming himself down as he did. Bakugo and Kurishima were stunned as he realized that Midoriya had a point. I'm not saying that he was lying about his quirk, but maybe there's some sort of limit or requirement needed to activate it. 
because right now, I believe that he can only use it on me and Bakugo, judging by the fact that only Kushima has managed to land a hit. The green haired boy then said that two others were silently absorbing this theory, until Bakugo added something. Eye contact. When we were tied up, he held our shoulders while locking eyes with us. Maybe that's how he activates his quirk. The blonde said, sounding much calmer than he usually did. Midoriya looked at Bakugo before nodding in acceptance of this new theory. Kushima, however, wasn't entirely sure. How can you be so sure about that he can't see my moves? Didn't you see how he avoided my initial flurry of attacks? The black haired teen said, being careful about the volume of his voice. Kushima's worry was a valid one, but Bakugo was quick to shoot it down. He wasn't using his quirk on you. He was just observing and predicting your moves. Even I could do that, especially if my opponent is a raging moron who attacks without thinking. The blonde said, this time sounding a little more aggressive. Kushima was about to get angry about what Bakugo said, but stopped when he realized that it was true. Anyone could technically predict their opponent's movements. They just needed to be observant. This also meant that Naida was far more calculative than he first thought. He quickly realized that Kushima was easily aggravated. Then he had chosen his words carefully to make him angry. This way he could make sure that Kushima, the only person he couldn't use his foresight on, was easy to read. Kushima finished his thought as he turned to Midori and asked, So, what's the plan? With a much calmer voice, Bakugo leaned in toward Midoriya because he wanted to hear this plan. The green haired boy thought about it for a second until he answered. We hit and run, hit him from different angles, hit him once, flee into the darkness. Don't let him see a pattern and since Kushima isn't affected by his foresight, we need to make sure he stays separate from me and Bakugo. Kushima nodded in agreement to this plan as Bakugo grinned and said, I like it, let's kick his ass. Sounding fired up while still whispering. Midoriya only nodded towards the other two before taking a deep breath and moving out. The trio took their positions around Nidai, making sure to take different angles. The agent was standing in darkness unaware of where their teens were, until someone suddenly charged from behind one of the pillars. Nidai couldn't see who it was that hit him, but they had backed off into hiding immediately after. Then came another hit, then another, and then another. Each hit seemed to come from a different person, always from a different angle. Nida was slowly being withered down with each one. The young vigilantes were not a group to be taken lightly, but there was a major flaw with their strategy. It looked to be random at first, but he managed to figure it out eventually. There was a pattern, and Nida now knew where the next attack was coming from. He stood himself up, and patiently waited for the attack to come. Then it finally came from behind him, and Nida didn't waste any time. He turned to face the attacker, seeing that it was one with the green hair and swung. Midoriya was caught off guard by Nidai and quickly dodged out of the way. The agent was surprised that the vigilante had managed to dodge, but he shrugged it off before throwing another kick. Midori had never been more focused in his entire life. He carefully watched Nidai and could then see and predict his moves. The green haired boy actually managed to avoid Nidai's hits, gaining a look of surprise from the AQTF agent. This didn't last long, however, for the green haired boy was unable to avoid more than just four hits. Nidai grabbed Midoriya by the arm holding him down with no hope of escaping. He then pulled out more of his ridiculously heavy paperweights, holding them between his fingers like a makeshift brass knuckle. Midori could see where his lethal attack was headed and used his free arm to shield his head. Nidai beat him over the arm twice, sending nasty cracks the shock still went into Midori's skull. He then stopped aiming towards the head and proceeded to bombard the green haired boy in the ribcage. Midori was overwhelmed with pain as he could both feel and hear his ribs cracking and breaking apart. The pain was so great that he began to lose consciousness, but Nidai still kept going with his mutilation. Midoriya! A voice then shouted furiously before Nidai was knocked away into a wall. Midoriya fell to the ground, and through his now blurry vision, he could barely see that the person that had shouted was a furious Kushima. The black haired teen ran up to the staggered Nidai and began to beat him down. He was enraged after seeing Midoriya almost get killed, and that fueled his flurry of attacks. Nidai had been staggered and couldn't dodge, which made him a victim of Kushima's wrath. The teen continued his beatdown, growing more violent and animalistic with each punch, even after his opponent stopped moving. But he was stopped from continuing any further when Bakugo pulled him away and shouted, Stop it, you crook! You're killing him! With a voice that hinted that concern, Kushima stopped as soon as he heard these words and was horrified by what he had done. Nidai's face had almost been beaten beyond recognition, bloody and broken. He was still breathing, but he still could have fooled people into thinking that he was dead. 
Kushima was horrified by this. He hated the HUTF, but he never wished to kill any of them. But now he had done exactly what Endeavor had done to him, and he couldn't help but think that he was no better than the flaming bastard. Kushima's shock was then broken by Bakugo, who ran over to the injured Midoriya. The black-haired teen was quick to join him and tried to help the green-haired boy. Are you alright? Kushima asked, looking very concerned by Midoriya's condition. The green-haired boy shivered and grunted in pain before he answered. I, uh, I think he broke some of my ribs. With a very strained voice, both Bakugo and Kurishima looked more concerned upon hearing this as the former then said, We can't stay here. We have to go. With his usual aggressive tone, Kurishima only nodded in agreement to this as he helped the blonde carry Midori away from the scene. Toshinori was getting anxious as he was worried. Neither Bakugo nor Midori had returned from their patrol yet, and it made him so anxious that he had begun to walk in circles. Can you stand still, Toshinori? You're making me dizzy. Aizawa said, sounding a little annoyed. Toshinori did not stop walking as he responded by saying, How can I stand still? Midori and Bakugo are still out there? What if they got captured? With a tone that was a mixture of worry and annoyance, Aizawa was about to speak against the buff blonde, but was beaten to it by Stain who said, You worry too much, you blonde fool. Those prats aren't some kids in constant need of supervision. They're smart, strong, and dare I even say impressive. With a strong voice, Toshinori finally stopped walking back and forth as he stared at the red-clad vigilante. Stain looked back at the blonde man, grinning as he then said, I can't do this. At any moment now, they're going to walk through that door, safe and sound, like nothing was wrong. With a determined voice, Aizawa was willing to speak up and make it a bet, but suddenly stopped himself when the door flung open to reveal three familiar figures. The adults stood up in shock, which quickly turned into worry when they saw the individuals in the doorway. We need your help here! Midoriya is injured! Bakugo shouted, prompting both Aizawa and Stain to run over and help carry Midoriya over to the table. Toshinori walked up and noticed that Kurishima had come in with the boys. Young Kurishima? The blonde man asked in confusion. The black-haired teen looked at the man, trying to hide his anxiety as he said, I encountered these two idiots while I was out for a stroll. They looked like they could use some help. With a voice that was trying to remain as calm as possible, Toshinori only smiled upon hearing this, relieved that Kurishima was able to find them. What happened? Aizawa then asked, sounding worried as both him and Stain helped Midoriya. Some AQTF bastard called Nidai tried to capture us, Bakugo then said, slowly returning to his usual demeanor. Both Aizawa and Stain looked shocked upon hearing this as they slowly looked over to Toshinori. The teens noticed this and wondered what it was all about, but they didn't get to ask about it before Toshinori spoke up. Well, I'm glad that you're all okay. Have you found your friends yet? The blonde man said, pointing the second half of his statement to Kurishima. The black-haired teen looked down into the ground as he answered by saying, Actually, I came looking for you regarding that matter. I need your help. And I... With an uncertain voice, but he stopped himself before he could finish. Toshinori was confused as he waited for the teen to continue finishing his sentence. Kushima continued looking down nervously until he finally finished his sentence. I want to join you, the teen finally said. Everyone in the room was shocked to hear this, for it was something that they hadn't expected. Kushima tried to ignore their reactions as he turned towards Midoriya. The green-haired boy had been bandaged up as it was Anne was now sitting on the table. Last time we met, you offered me to join you. Well, I thought it over and I, and I think I'll take up on that offer, Kushima said, hoping that Midoriya hadn't forgot what he said. The green-haired boy smiled upon hearing Kushima's words, which in turn made him smile. These words made Toshinori smile once again as he placed his hand on Kushima's shoulder and said, well, you won't have to hear any complaints from me. Welcome aboard, young Kurishima. With his usual proud voice, Kurishima smiled upon hearing this as he saw both Stain and Aizawa nod with a hint of reluctance in their posture. The latter then walked over to his laptop and opened it up, only to be met with shocking news. This is a problem, Aizawa said tirelessly. Everyone looked at him confused as he showed them all the news. It turns out the events that had transpired earlier that night had been reported. The details about vigilante groups and the AQTF had been left out for the reason of not garnering too much attention. But the most concerning thing was the details of their suspect. 
The most outstanding details mentioned were those of a teenager with black hair. Everyone looked at it with mixed feelings. It wasn't much to go from, but it was still concerning since they knew that it was Kashima that they were talking about. The room was silent for a moment, until Bakugo spoke up quite angrily. Damn criminal, do you not know how to keep a low profile? The blonde shouted, showing his anger. Kashima got annoyed upon hearing this as he responded by saying, That's rich coming from someone who can't speak without shouting. A little angrily, Bakugo got more angry upon hearing this as he shouted, What do you say, you damn crook? Which in turn led Kashima getting more angry and shouting back, You heard me, you explosive idiot! The two continued like this for a while until Stain was forced to get between them and stop them from fighting. Both Midoriya and Toshinori watched the exchange with weird expressions as Midoriya asked, What did I just witness? With a tone that showed pure confusion, the one to answer him was Toshinori who said, Two teens in desperate need of anger management or a game of tennis, but instead of a ball they're throwing angry insults at each other, or maybe both. With an equally confused voice, Midoriya giggled upon hearing Toshinori's words, which in turn let the blonde also giggling. Regardless, if they need anger management or not, we need to solve the issue of Kurishima having black hair. I think the easiest way to do that is with a mask. Aizawa then said, sounding just as tired as before. Aizawa began to discuss the matters with others, until Midoriya spoke up after thinking. I have a suggestion. Why don't we just change his hairstyle and hair color? The green haired boy said, Woi still a little strained from his injuries. Everyone looked at him in silence, as they realized that it was probably one of the easier solutions to their problem. Kashima thought about it for a second until he said, I like that idea, with a grin. Back in the abandoned building, Night Eye still lied, beaten and battered. He just woke up from his unconscious state, and he was baffled by what had happened. He had been defeated by a group of teenagers, and some of them even had anger issues. He couldn't help but think that all three of them had potential, especially the one with green hair. He realized the benefits of destroying the floodlights. He probably figured him out and built a strategy, and he was able to predict and avoid some of his attacks. He would have made a great agent of the AQTF, which is why it's a loss to see him on the side of vigilantism. But despite the heavy loss, Nida still has won. He primarily came here for information, and he got his hands on a crucial piece. The agent struggled to properly breathe as he gave words to the information that he had obtained. Midoriya. Thank you all for sticking around and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We The Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you will need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of Weedy Slice Tools, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day!